gospel as recorded by John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I want to read just a few verses beginning at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Yes. Verses 1 through 5. Amen. 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 We want to reason with you today with the subject, In the beginning was the Word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the beginning, In the beginning. was the uh. The word. Uh, John uh, outlines the uh, first chapter and he does it different from the other gospels, the synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Yeah. John, unlike the other Gospels, left out some things that the other ones uh, included. One thing in particular, Matthew, Mark, and Luke started about the birth of Jesus Christ. And uh, John, apparently led by the Holy Spirit, uh, did not think it was necessary to deal with that along with the synoptic gospels. Synoptic means see together. Amen. In other words, they wrote about the same events, basically in the same way, using the, basically the same terminology. Uh, however, uh, John started with the beginning. And he recognized the fact, as the other gospel perhaps did, but didn't find it necessary to say that the beginning of Jesus Christ wasn't in Bethlehem. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, it was not in Bethlehem. That's right. In John's uh, gospel, there are some key terms. And you heard me read about life in verse 4. Also, he mentions uh, light, darkness, in verse 5, witness, uh, truth, witness in verse 7, truth in verse 9, world in verse 9. John specifically spoke about these terms. Son, verse 14. Father also in verse 14. Glory in verse 14. But we want to emphasize greatly on the word, word, Amen. verse 1. Although grace is also in verse 14. Word, the Greek term logos, does occur elsewhere in the gospel, but not as a Christological title. Christological, simply speaking about the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Amen. Matthew shows that Jesus came from Abraham. Mm -hmm. So he traced him all the way back through Abraham, through David, and pointed out that he is, in fact, the Messiah. Matthew 1, 1 through 17. Mark, however, shows that Jesus came from Nazareth, demonstrating that Jesus is a servant. Mark 1 and 9. 
Luke shows that Jesus came from Adam. So he did the geek genealogy and he traced him back to the first man, Adam. Demonstrating that Jesus is the perfect man as described in Luke 3 and 23 through 38. John shows that Jesus came from heaven. Demonstrating the fact that the word demonstrated Jesus is God. Yeah. John's gospel is paradoxical. Uh, it both shows simplicity and depth. And one writer explained this that uh, John's gospel is something like a pool which a child may wade in. An elephant might swim in that same pool. Right. Simplicity and depth. Who made that statement originally? I don't know, but it makes good sense. In other words, it's simple, yeah. but it's profound. profound. Thank you. The Logos, a term that the Greek used in a philosophical way. But John placed in Jesus in that place. And it takes the place of a word which is generally accounted in philosophy as reason. It's used to convey a message. But what better person to put in that other than Jesus our Christ? That's why it says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. But in case someone wanted to get mixed up to deny the deity or the divinity of Jesus Christ, it says, in the beginning was the word. But then it says, and the word was with God. Yeah. He's with God. Yes, he He's speaking of the Father. He's with God. So it shows a distinction between the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, yet they are one. Right. In the beginning was the Word. You notice it didn't say in the beginning is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. In other words, the Word always has been. Self-derived. Self-sustained. He is. He's not something of the past. He is the past and he is now. Yeah. Yeah. And the word was God. So he's with God. But let's not forget the fact that he's God too. That's right. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That doesn't compute mathematically, but we're not dealing with mathematics. We're dealing with truth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. In other words, uh, the Gnostics, particularly outlined in Colossians, tried to make Jesus a created being. How can He be a created being and He's the agent of creation? The Word said nothing was made that He didn't make. So when we go to Genesis at the end of the beginning, Jesus was already there. Yes, sir. Yes, he was. Yeah. In him, him. with life and the life with light of men. In other words, life comes from God. There is no life. But not God. That's right. Now, we try to trace out the infinite of God with a finite mind and we can't do it. We figure everything has a beginning, everything has a beginning. How can you say, oh, God always has been? Because he's God. Well, he yeah. No one made him. He's self-derived. How do you explain that? 
You don't explain it, you believe it. Because hey. that's what the Word says. And the Word is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God. And He makes no mistakes. That's why the Word says not one jot, not one tittle will pass away. That means the stroke of a pen, even the punctuation marks in the Bible, or inspired by the Holy Spirit, and they are truth. Yes. Yes, they are. Thank you, Lord. Word logos, a common Greek term which meant reason, speaking a message, are words. Logos was widely used in Greek philosophical teaching as well as Jewish wisdom. Literature and philosophy. John chose the term because it was familiar to his readers, but he invested it with a new meaning. And when we talk about the word, we need to recognize the fact these three points. The living word, which is Jesus. The spoken word in the Greek, which is rima. And the written word, which is the Bible. John emphasizes all three of those points. The light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended is not. Now let me say something about that comprehended is not. Usually in English when we say comprehend, we're talking about understanding or not understanding. But in that particular context here, comprehended that the darkness could not overcome, the darkness could not supersede, the darkness could not overpower the light. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Word. Thank you, Lord. Let me just mention three translations. Uh, John here one and five, you have three basic translations of the Bible. It's a little teaching here too. Uh, you have the literal translation, which is the King James is an example. That's why when people say, well, I don't read nothing but the King James, well, you need to repent because the King James needs to be revised. Because words that meant certain things when the King James was written don't mean the same thing now in our language. Therefore, it was necessary to revise it. Doesn't mean that it was wrong, it needed to be revised so that the Bible said what it always said. Because the Bible never can mean what it didn't mean in the first place. That's why revisions are necessary. It's not changing, it's taking the oldest manuscript that you have available and putting the word in that's equivalent. So you have what you call the dynamic equivalent. The NIV is an example of that. And so is the New King James Version. Uh, darkness shines in the darkness and cannot, cannot overcome it. The NIV will say, where the King James says, comprehend it not. That might be misunderstood. So didn't understand it. But that's not what it's saying. It's saying the darkness cannot overcome the light because the light comes from God. That's right. So the literal translation, like I said, with like King James, dynamic equivalent is NIV. But then we have a free translation. Living Bible means just what it says. That the translation is a little bit too free and could be misunderstood. An example of that, uh, you could say in the Living Bible that, and you would be telling the truth as far as the old translation, Jesus was born from a young woman. But you need to be a less free 
and say Jesus was born from a virgin because what a virgin means to us today is a woman that has not had sex with a man and young woman is not sufficient. So we have to be careful with free translations like the living Bible. I'm not saying don't read them, but have sense enough to recognize the fact that uh, in studying, you need a different translation so that you get the whole truth. In the beginning was the word, and as I stated, not is. In the beginning was. For you educators, that's uh, durative, imperfect. It means continued action. So it wasn't that we are saying that Jesus was and then he left and he's not available anymore. He always has been. Yes, sir. Do it to the imperfect. Continue action. In the beginning, refer, refers to the timeless eternity of Genesis 1 and 19. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John wrote essentially, when the beginning began, the word was already there. He existed before creation. At even time, the word is the self-existent God. Logos, as I said before, a common Greek term which meant speaking a message or word. Logos was widely used in Greek philosophical teaching as well as in Jewish wisdom, literature, and philosophy. John told the term as Jesus did. He would use terminology that the people were familiar with. He would talk to farmers. He would use uh, terms that farmers were familiar with familiar with convey a message that was easier for them to understand it. Like the soil, for instance. He's talking to people that were uh, agricultural in mind, and therefore they recognized the fact that when you threw seeds out there in the old way, that the wind would blow them in different areas and they would fall <coughs> on different ground. He used that to explain the ground as the heart. Yeah. In other words, the heart had to be tilled like the soil did, yeah. tender and ready to receive the word. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. The Greek philosopher saw the Logos as the power that makes the world orderly. The power that set the world in perfect order and kept or keeps it going. They saw Logos as the ultimate reason that control all things. John's tell us who that power is, that ultimate reason, that Logos, that word, that messenger that controls all things, that creator, that sustainer, who he is. He is the self-existent God, the Father's Son. Our God, yet there is but one God. Why is that something rather than nothing? The answer to that question is God. In philosophy, the Christian answer is God. Colossians 1 and 16, 1 Corinthians 8 and 6, Hebrews 1 and 12. All creation was made by the Word in relation to the Father and the Spirit. The word came, as the Bible says, to reveal the Father. Yes, sir. We were totally depraved. Could not receive the Father unless Jesus revealed him. Mm -hmm. The word says in John 1 and 14 and verse 18, he came to reveal the Father. Life is man's most important asset. Life is in Christ. Man's physical and spiritual life comes from him. Jesus is the source of life. It's also the light of men. Darkness denotes death, sin, ignorance. But as Isaiah states, the light brings forth illumination. And we're not talking about just physical illumination when you turn on these lights. Yes, we're talking about a spiritual illumination, yeah. the illumination of the mind yeah. Yeah. where you can understand and receive the revelation. Yeah. Illumination of the mind where you can reason 
an ability that God gave humankind yes, that he didn't give to animals. Right. Sometimes the way we live is wonderful if we recognize the fact that we have the ability to reason. Yes. We have more than instinct yes. like animals. Right. So as Isaiah says in chapter 1, why do we act like animals? He talks about the donkey and other animals recognizing their master's creed. Yes, sir. He said, what my people do not consider. He's saying animals that are denoted as being stupid, ox and a burden of labor, sometimes act worse than my folk who are placed at the pinnacle of my creation. Made them stewards. So he came to reveal the Father. Darkness denotes ignorance. Isaiah described that coming salvation as the people living in darkness seeing a great light. Light dispels darkness. Spiritual illumination dispels ignorance. That's why Paul says in his writing, I will not have you ignorant, brothers. We figure let's be in derogatory, but he's saying I will not have you ignorant. I will not have you uninformed or misinformed. Therefore, I give you illumination that you are to live as Christians according to the vocation that I've given you, that you might make a difference, that you are, in fact, the salt of the earth. That's right. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. John talks about John the Baptist as a witness. But John the Baptist didn't try to steal the master's thunder. Yeah. Hey, yes, sir. That's right. That's right. Uh, he said, I am not the, the Christ. Yes, sir. I'm not even worthy to relax his sandals or his shoes. Right, and when he saw him coming, he says, Behold the Lamb of God. Yes, yes. yes. That comes to take away the sin of the world. Yes, sir. Glad yeah. that John came as the forerunner. Yeah. But he didn't come as the Christ. John came, but he was not afraid to be bold and to preach and teach the word of God. Yeah. He would call. The Pharisees, vipers, or snakes, and his head would end up on a platter. But he knew that he served a God that was not only able to take care of the living, but was able to take care of him beyond the grave. I wouldn't serve a God that couldn't take care of me beyond the grave. Therefore, as he enables me, as long as he tells me to, I intend to preach the whole gospel. Even when I feel convicted myself, I want to declare the word that he is the truth. If you love it today, one time, say yes. If you recognize that he is the word, that he came at Calvary Cross, yes. Yes, he said the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Literally means that he pitched his tent he tabernacle. He is my dwelling place. He didn't just provide a place for me to dwell, but he is my dwelling place. In other words, as the 
psalmist always says, He my refuge, yeah. He my strength. Yeah. I know that He's all right. Yeah. In that when I had no hope, yeah. He gave me a sense of hope. Yes, he gave me a joy that not continued on circumstances. He made it possible on Calvary Mountain. Yeah. Yeah, he enabled them uh, to place the crown of thorns uh, around his head. Uh, yeah, but I can hear him saying, uh, it's finished! It's finished! In other words, the process of salvation is finished. He dies! But on the third day morning, he dies!
grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Let each of us say, Thank you so much for tuning in today, Mount Olive. And we also want to acknowledge and thank our special guests, our visitors, for tuning in today and being a part of our church services. We invite you to be a part of our church services every week. Our prayer is that you heard something that blessed you and that would encourage you to deepen your relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mount Olive, we have already received our directives from our pastor concerning our tithes and offerings. And our prayer is that each one of us will be obedient. But we would also like to extend the invitation to our visitors to give. We promise you if God has placed on your heart to give into this ministry, plant a financial seed, you would be planting a seed in good ground. Log on to our website where you'll have instructions on giving. You can submit a special prayer request or if you would like to be a part of our church family, we welcome you. We want to connect with you. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Frank Jenkins Sr. and the entire Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church family, thank you and may God bless you.